and welcome to the latest Crafty Snipers videos. Uh, right, this is going to be a blog style video. Um, I have been posting recently that I've managed to get a new DMR up and running. And as of this video being made, I was supposed to be testing it yesterday. However, at the moment, it is glorious sunshine. Not much wind. And in fact, nope, no wind at all. And quite a nice warm degrees of temperature. However, yesterday at my friend's range, it was raining, it was overcast, it was miserable. And I wasn't able to test this, this rifle that is sat before me now. However, a little bit of background history. I had a KJ Works KCO2 uh, rifle, um, semi-automatic, uh, designated marksman rifle, themed styled rifle, um, in my collection. I played it three times, maybe four times. It's a green gas uh, rifle, so um, green gas goes into the magazine, magazine goes into the gun, hey, hey, presto, that's how it works. However, the be slight issue is the KJ Works KCO2 is, as it comes, quite hot. It shoots at 420, 415, 420 FPS on 0.2s, which means it can't be used by uh, my club. However, a way around this is to HBA tap the magazines. So you're changing the ability for the gas mag to run on green gas, and now it runs on fresh air. What you do is you take the valve out of the bottom, the fill valve, replace it with a tap for a uh, HPA line, which is one of these doohickeys, um, then you run it on one of these doohickeys, and basically you can regulate the pressure down to a more reasonable, more safer, and therefore usable uh, FPS. Downside that I figured out, one, because the way the magazine sits in the gun, it's very much in the middle of the gun, it's a straight magazine, um, and the tap is at, right at the bottom, and it's uh, directly facing down, the line wasn't quite long enough to reach round and put uh, the tank in my normal position. So it felt quite tight as I was shouldering this weapon. Another more noticeable downside is the fact that when you want to reload your magazine, remember it's a gas magazine so it holds 25, 26 rounds, uh, you had to disconnect the, mag uh, disconnect the line, disconnect the uh, magazine from the gun, put that away, next magazine, into the gun, line connects to that magazine, because you've got to tap on that, and away you go. It's a bit long-winded, especially when you're doing it every, I don't know, quite fast, I shall say, because 25, 26 rounds does not last a long time. Um, so I had to come up with plan B, or plan C, technically. I knew, knew of this gizmo that had been created by the French person, I can't pronounce his name, um, however, the company he works for, company he created, is called Tanuki Works. And Mr. Tanuki, I shall call him, uh, created an adapter for the KCO2. And it allows the KCO2 to run... Um, need to drop the old rifle then. These things. This is an MP5 mag. This specifically is a TM Tokyo Marine 50 round MP5 mag. It's not a gas magazine. No fill valve, uh, just a typical AEG 50 round um, low cap. And this now runs in the green gas magazine, uh, sorry, the green gas rifle uh, that I have here. The adapter not only changes the ability to run on these things, but it also makes it a HPA rifle and allows the line to sit out of the actual gun, not the magazine, and it allows you to have this thing running by these two things again, but it makes magazines cheaper, it makes magazines more easily to come by, it makes the rifle a little bit lighter, and it allows it to have faster reloads because all you've got to do is just put the magazine in, take the magazine out, that's all you've got to do, you haven't got to change any line because the line is here, the line is coming out of the actual adapter, which is just about somewhere where my finger is. Um, and that's connected up to your tank, like I say, and sits there quite happily. So, yes, hopefully, hopefully I shall be testing this possibly next week, as of this video going out, at Combat Zone, see what it's doing. I haven't changed anything else on this rifle, apart from adding a scope and putting a nice suppressor, which I have noticed does say 5.56 on it, um, and that so, most certainly is not a 5.56 magazine. Um, so, yeah. 
I have figured out that, obviously I would like to run this as a DMR, I really would, so that would limit me to 400 feet per second on point twos with a 25 meter, 25 meter minimum engagement distance. However, because I'm running HPA, and because of this gizmo right here, which if you don't know is called a regulator and therefore allows me to regulate the PSI out of this thing, I can run, not that, but I can run this as an AEG, essentially, with no minimum engagement distance. Brings my FPS down to 350 with .2s. But last time I fired this thing, and I was testing it with, at the very least, I think it was .3s, all the way up to .4s, uh, and I think I did stupidly put some 4.3s inside it, um, it was still a good weapon. It still had a good 50-odd meter range. And shot-to-shot -shot accuracy for a gas rifle, remember, um, is actually quite good. So, yeah, I, I've got a wonderful weapon here that I can actually run. I can either use it as a new AEG, or I can run it as a DMR, with a simple change of uh, that bit in there, which is just a little hex key. And, a hey, presto, two rolls, one gun. I have four magazines. 450 round magazines. I wanted the limit. I did want the stubby mags, if I'm perfectly honest. I wanted the 30 round stubby mags. I couldn't find them for love and the money. I just wanted to get some MP5 mags to uh, test the systems to make sure it worked, to make sure the gun actually fires. Uh, so that's why I ended up with these 50 rounders. Again, it's still sniper limitations, almost 50 rounds uh, for airsoft style. Um, but obviously, the 30 rounders would have been a lot better for me. And I may end up with them. Who knows? A lot of people always say that you can't run a gas rifle uh, as a under 350 um, limitations because it's a gas rifle, it's noisy, it's uh, got a big bolt on it, you know, buffer tubes, all that kind of stuff. It makes a lot of movement, recoil, you know, not, not compared to the real steel version, but for an airsoft version, it's a lot more than an electric gun that goes zip, 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 and just puts BBs in a line. Uh, gas guns generally don't. This one's different <laughs> because the only uh, the, the, the bolt here, the bolt handle, which is where that finger is, is tiny and it moves like that. That's all it moves. There is no felt recoil with this gun. Oh, it's barely, barely recoil. And remember, this thing is chain. This thing is copied off the Ruger 1022 which I, th I do believe fires a 22 um, bullet, which is tiny, little minuscule little thing. And that has no recoil. Um, this, this gun, this airsoft replica, could be the closest rendition of its real steel version ever. I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. I mean, if you look at electric guns, they're completely utterly different from the... Electric M4 is completely different from the real steel version M4. Ignoring the fact that one runs on batteries and one runs on the freedom. Um, AKs. Gas AKs don't recoil like the real AK. This thing... You could give this thing to a guy or person who has a real Ruger 1022 and say, Shoot this. It's an airsoft replica. See how it feels. And you go... It feels exactly the same as my Ruger over there. <laughs> so I just realised that that could be, um, could be a uh, the, one of the first replicas that's actually very, very close to the real thing. It is a very comfortable system to use. Um, it is a wee tad bit on the long side, if I'm honest. I have realised that. Obviously, most of that's coming from the suppressor. Simple 14mm um, threads on that, so it's very, very simple. You do have a adjustable buffer tube. So anybody who's, oh sorry, adjustable stock even. Uh, anybody who's used pretty much any M4, you'll have used this. I'm not a total fan of them, I really am not. I prefer solid uh, stocks uh, to my M4s and M16s and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't believe you can get a solid stock for this. Um, you can have a wood, sorry, carved wood stock put onto this to make it look like a real 1022 Ruger. However, they are A, fantastically expensive because of the work that goes into them, and B, quite rare to get hold of. You can even put the real steel version on one of these things 
and there's only a little bit of difference you need to do a little bit of filing here and there which is slightly worrying if I'm honest I've taken this thing to pieces a few times to see how it ticks um, and it seems to be a very simple system I mean gas blowback systems are actually a lot more s simple than AEGs there's no batteries, there's no cables, there's nothing like that it's just basically a gas system replic replicating a real um, rifle and how it fires um, there's a lot of what's in here looks roughly like what's in the real steel version. Um, I think also what gives it away as being comfortable for anyone with an M4 is the fact that it's got a rail system. It's got a four quad rail system, very long one on the top, two quite chunky ones on the sides, and an equal size chunky one on the uh, bottom part. So you can put, if you want to run it as an AG, you want to run it as a semi-assault rifle uh, with nine millimeter rounds, um, you can put on all your torches and lasers and peck boxes and all that kind of dribble on it. All I've managed to do is put a, a vertical grip on it and makes it very comfortable to hold. Hey presto, that will do. Um, the scope I've got on it is nothing fantastic, it's just a scope. Um, but for airsoft purposes, it's bang on. Um, so yeah, again, I do believe these are plastic, um, plastic um, rails on it, but Another wonderful thing about the KCO2, and it's usually a game that we like to play with all new guns, where's the hop dial? The hop dial for this is actually here. It's got a top dead centre hop adjustment wheel um, already pre-built into the gun. So my SRS has, um, sorry, my Mark 23s have um, top dead centre adjustable screws, um, they were invented by somebody else, but KJ Works came out with the uh, system already put into the gun here. Um, it does mean you are limited a little bit in where you want to put your scope, obviously, you've got to try and work out where you want your scope mounts to not get in the way of this um, this thread, but what this allows you to do is to look, well, take your scope off when you're testing it, see how straight it's shooting, keep the gun holding in position, readjust the thread, uh, so readjust the screw, take more shots and see as you're shot to shot without moving the rifle, because sometimes it's a case of, right, bang bang, take a few shots, oh it's doing that. Pull the charging handle back, adjust the screw, charge handle forward, dun dun, oh now it's doing that, you know, and readjust that way. Bit of a pain in the fuffle, kerfuffle even. Uh, this is a much better way. So yeah, this is my HPA powered um, KCO2. I can't wait to try this out. I was supposed to try this out yesterday, it didn't happen. Uh, I've tried it out at home. I haven't set the PSIs on it. Uh, that's going to come up probably to, uh, probably next Sunday. Don't know whether I'll be using it next Sunday, but uh, all being well, um, yeah, it's a possibility it should be used fairly soon. So if you've got any questions or comments regarding the KCO2, please bang them over to me. Um, if you're a bit interested in the actual adapter, which is this little thing in here, uh, made by Tanuki Works, I think it retails at 70 five pounds I think 76 something silly like that uh, pounds uh, it came from France it was here within uh, less than a week uh, fantastic service the guy you know I was actually I was, a bit, I was unsure actually I was unsure about this because you know it does sound a bit more like snake oil if I'm honest um, so I actually spoke to him I actually spoke to this this geezer and I was uh, Mr. Tanuki and um, he was telling me and he was very very honest about it he wasn't BSing me. He wasn't trying to ram it down my throat and say, oh yes, you've got to buy this or your rifle's going to be naff. No, 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 none of that crap. He was actually quite friendly, which is something that you don't see in airsoft very often now on the retail side of it. Uh, and like I say, he sold me this, uh, 70 plus pounds, nearly 80 odd pounds by the time uh, shipping and all that come on over. Less than a week, it's in the UK. Set of magazines and away we go. Um, so yeah, it did have a little bit of um, a little bit of work needed doing to it to actually because um, I have to take out some parts of the old magazine you have to take out one of the valves um, put that in there and then you have a little latch that goes over the top of this and, and put little um, bits of metal through it um, all those pieces are given to you in the kit that you buy um, the box is out over there, it's a little teeny wee box um, all the bits that you need from your old magazines are in your old magazines so you, you know, you've got all the bits and pieces it took me three minutes <laughs> to swap it all over it's a bit of a fuffle trying to get it in there, but once it's in, it's in. Uh, it is a 3D printed part, by the way. Um, so, also, something else I didn't notice, it's a bit of a sod going, trying to get new magazines 
in a new part here. However, because it's plastic or composite plastic or whatever they're class 3D printed stuff as, um, it will wear in over time. But now it's, um, I haven't fired it or used it or anything. It's, it's trying to find that sweet spot uh, once you find it. It's a piece of, um, well, that's very, very easy. So like I say, if you've got any questions or comments about the KCO2, please bang them over for me. I will answer them as soon as I can. Hopefully I'll get some pictures of it in field next Sunday. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on Airsoft Field for a sniper scope very, very soon.